Hi everyone, Mrs V here. And today we're going to look at the second part of our chemical analysis series on how to standardize hydrochloric acid using a standard solution of sodium carbonate. Today we'll be focusing on the titration, how to record your results, and what to do with your results once you have them. So let's get our whiteboard on and let's do some analysis. We saw in our last video how to calculate the concentration of your standard solution of sodium carbonate once you've made it. And we ran through and found out that the concentration of the standard solution I had made was 0.051 moles per litre of sodium carbonate. Now, in this titration, we are going to standardise, or that is find the concentration of, some hydrochloric acid, which we know is approximately 0.1 moles per litre. So you'll need to get yourself set up for titration. I have a video on titration technique where I did a redox titration. So if you are unsure about the correct technique for titration, please check that one out. But you're basically going to be setting up a burette which contains your hydrochloric acid. Okay, so you will need to prepare the burette by rinsing it, making sure the jet is full and filling it up so that you've got an, around about 50 mils in your burette. You will have some flasks in which you are going to pipette your standard solution. So the pipette size that I'm using is 10.0 mil. And so you may be using a different size. Um, I use 10 mils and therefore I'm expecting my titers to be around about 10 mils. That's gonna really help me get through the titration much faster. So I will be pipetting and I will rinse my pipette with my standard solution, and then I will fill it, zero it, and so forth. Then deliver my sample into a conical flask. So you can see here, we've got some conical flasks. That's gonna contain your sodium carbonate solution, which for me will be 10.0 mils. And it says one drop of methyl orange indicator. I think two drops is okay. It's up to you. Depends on your color vision, how good you are at seeing small numbers of drops change color. Now, methyl orange has, because you're putting it into sodium carbonate as an alkali, it will have a yellow color. Its acid color is a pink color. What you're looking for, your end point of the titration, you're looking for that peachy color that's in between pink and yellow. So that's the color that you are looking for in your flask. And when you see that color, that is when you're gonna turn your burette off. Reading the burette, you read the burette to two decimal places. Now that is going to look like you're estimating the second decimal place and you are. The main thing you really need to know is whether or not that burette reading is going to round up or down. So you really need to know if it's more than 0.5 or less than 0.5. Recording your results, you need a table like this one to put your results in. And um, you'll fill that out as you do the titration. So I'm doing my titration, my pipette aliquo every time is going to be 10.0 mils. I've filled up my burette and my initial volume is 0, 0.00 mils. Notice I've got two decimal places. You must read the burette to two decimal places. I perform my first titration. Because I know that the titer is going to be around 10 mils, I'm just gonna dump eight mils straight in. And at the end of that, I see that my indicator is still yellow. I'm going to then set up a really slow drip rate from the burette until that indicator reaches the pale peach color. When I did that, I found that 
my final burette reading was 10.48 mils. Now my titer, which is the volume I've actually added, is the final burette reading minus the initial. So in this case, easy because my initial volume was zero. It doesn't have to be zero. And so I've my titer is 10.48. Now I'm going to repeat this process until I get to concordance. I want three concordant titers. So that means I want three titers for which the biggest minus the smallest is less than 0 0.1 of a mil. It seems unachievable, but with plenty of practice, you'll actually be able to get this very easily. All right, second titration. My pipette volume was still 10.0, but my starting volume now is 10.48 because I'm going to start. I don't need to fill the burette every time. I've got plenty left in the burette. There's 50 mils in a burette. I've got plenty left in there. I can do another titration. This time when the indicator changed color, my end volume was 20.98 mils. And that means that my titer delivered was 10.50. Now these two titers are concordant because they're only different, they're only different by 0 0.02 mils. So I only need one more that is that close and my titration is finished. So this time 20, my pipette volume is still 10. I had a starting at 20.98. And this time I am so titrating. The indicator goes a peach color and my final volume is 31.59. So to work out my titer then, my titer is 10.61. And that's not good enough because the biggest minus the smallest 10.61 take 10.48. That's equal to 0 0.13 mils. So I don't have concordance yet. So I have to try again. So again, I've got 10.0. This time I'm starting at 31.59. And I do my titration and my final volume is 42.18. Which means my titer is 10.59. So if I chuck out the worst one, if I chuck this one out because that's really bad, now I'm looking at 10.59 minus 10.48, 0 0.11 mils. Oh, it's still not concordant. It has to be less than 0.1. So I have to go again. This can become quite frustrating, especially if you have two values that are concordant at one volume and two that are concordant at another volume. Never mind, back to the burette. Now, I am not going to have enough left in that burette to do another titration. The burette only holds 50 mils, so I don't even have eight mils left. So I'm gonna refill the burette and do another titration. This time when I, the indicator goes that pale peach color, my volume's 10.49. That's looking better, so I'm going to get rid of, I don't need that one. Let's have a look. So. 10.50 is my biggest, 10.48 is my smallest, and that is equal to 0 0.02. So rejoicing, yes, finally, I have concordance. So now I can stop my titration, pack up my equipment. I have all the data I need for my calculation. So let's get on with it. So the first thing I need to do is work out my average titer. So I need the average of the three concordant titers. So for me, that is 10.50. 
10.48 plus 10.50 plus 10.49 over three. So my average titer is 10.49 mils. And we don't include, don't include the ones that were outside of that concordant range, only the ones that are inside it. Once you've got three, give up. No need to go any further. You do not want to have, it's not going to be any better for you to have five concordant titers. It's just going to waste time. And particularly if you're doing an exam in this, you do not want to be wasting time. So that is, that 10.49 mils is your volume of hydrochloric acid. So if we summarize all the information you've got now, you have the concentration of hydrochloric acid is what you're trying to find out. The volume of hydrochloric acid is equal to 10.49 mil. Your concentration of sodium carbonate was 0 0.051 moles per liter. The volume of sodium carbonate was our pipette volume, which is 10 mils. Just be really careful here. Quite often people get too caught up with the standard solution calculations and think that the volume of sodium carbonate is 100 mils, but you didn't use the entire 100 mils in a titration. You took a sample of 10. So be really careful of that one. Now that you have that information, this becomes a simple stoichiometry problem. So let's do our stoichiometry process. We start with a balanced equation. So our equation is sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Now, one of the mistakes that I see students make over and over again is getting the formula of sodium carbonate wrong. So many times people ignore that really important step of getting the chemical formula right. So don't be tricked. Sodium carbonate is not NaCO3, it is Na2CO3 because it's made of Na plus and CO3 two minus. So make sure you get your formula correct. This is an acid base react or acid carbonate reaction. So it's going to make a metal salt. So hydrochloric acid makes chloride salts. The metal we have is sodium. So we're going to get sodium chloride and then it'll make water and carbon dioxide. To balance this equation, I've got two sodiums on the left, which means I'm going to need two sodium chlorides here. Now, you can see that I have two chlorines and therefore I'm going to need two hydrochloric acids. Everything else balances. All we've got to do is put in our states. So sodium carbonate, we're using a solution. So that's aqueous. Acids are aqueous. The sodium chloride will be aqueous. Water is a liquid and carbon dioxide is a gas. All right, we have our balanced equation. On to step two, we need to calculate the moles of the known. Now you never have to worry in a titration where you're doing a standardization because the known is always going to be your standard solution. You made that solution of known concentration so that you could use it to standardize the sodium, uh, the, sodium the hydrochloric acid. So, the moles of the standard solution, moles is equal to concentration times volume. Our concentration was 0 0.051 moles per litre. Our volume is 10 mils, but you must convert to litres. So our um, number of moles, therefore, is going to be 5.1 times by 10 to the minus 4. Now we need to use the mole ratio to find the moles of the unknown. So the unknown here is our hydrochloric acid. So moles of hydrochloric acid over moles of sodium carbonate. 
If we go up to our equation, we need, we've got two moles of hydrochloric acid for every one mole of sodium carbonate. So it's two to one. And of course, doing a little bit of algebra, that means that the moles of hydrochloric acid, if we cross multiply, is equal to two times by the moles of sodium carbonate. We know the moles of sodium carbonate, we worked that out in step two. So it's two times by 5.1 times by 10 to the minus four, which is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus three. Final step, we're gonna to convert to the required quantity. And in our case, this is concentration. So we've got our moles of hydrochloric acid. We know our volume of hydrochloric acid. That's our average titer. We need to find the concentration, which is moles over volume. So our moles is 1.0 times 10 to the minus three. And our volume, don't forget to put it in liters, is 10.49 mils, 0.01049 liters. And we run that through the calculator and we get 0.097 moles per litre. So there you have it. That is how you use your standard solution of sodium carbonate to determine the concentration of an unknown hydrochloric acid solution. That's all for today. I will see you in the next video.